All right, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in Proxmox, and we're running on Virtual Environment 6, which you'll see here in a little bit of video of how I installed it. But right now I have one local storage set up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create an actual container in my Proxmox environment. So first, let's go to Templates, which is under your storage. And you'll notice that you have a whole bunch of systems to choose from. You got several turnkey ones, which are some pre-configured environments that you can use. Or you could go ahead and go with a base install, which I'm going to go ahead and choose here. Uh, let me see. I am going to actually choose a CentOS 7 and hit download. And you just let it do its thing here. Luckily, I got a fast internet. So, ta-da, done. Now, I have this CentOS base image. Now I can go ahead and go here to my VM host, and you'll notice that actually, regardless of where I am, up at the very top there, you'll see the create VM, create container, all of those, regardless of whichever window you're in. So you don't have to keep moving, but I tend to do that. So I'm gonna do create CT, which is create container. My host name, I'm gonna name this one VPN and I'm just going to put in my password here and I can load in an SSH key if I would like to which I'll probably do a little later on but for right now I'm going to go ahead and store it in the local storage I'm going to choose my CentOS machine and I'm going to go to my root disk I don't need a lot for my space here but I am going to go ahead and say let's do a 15 gig drive just in case um, I'm going to go ahead and give it two virtual cores and I'm going to give it 248 gigs of RAM with a 248 gig swap. Um, officially it probably wouldn't even need that much because I'm going to be running it without a GUI. Um, yeah, actually let me make an adjustment to that. I'm going to go 1024, so a 1 gig of memory with a 2 gig swap. Let's go with that and my network in this case uh, it's going to spin up its own tunnel because I'm going to be using open connect in my VPN here which I'll be showing in a later video but for right now let me just show you some basics as far as network here you can choose whether or not you want to do a static IP address or a DHCP as usual uh, I want a static address uh, you can also add in if you want a VLAN tag or any of these additional steps now you'll notice I already have a VM bridge created. If you've seen my other video, link above, you'll see a basic walkthrough out of that. If you have any further questions, uh, comments, or concerns, please leave your messages down in the uh, comments below. I do respond, or at least I try to respond to everybody. Um, so I'll be able to respond to whatever questions that you may have. Um, all right, so what we're gonna wanna do is I wanna give this thing an IP address. Now one of my VPNs that I have on another Hyper-V environment is uh, 99, I believe. I wanna say it's 91, actually. So let's make sure, let me make sure 92 is available. I can, there we go. I'm doing this off camera, sorry about that. All right, 92 is available. So let's do 92 and do it as a slash 24 and 254 and I'm not going to worry about IPv6 right now and leaving everything else as is DNS settings now the domain is going to be your domain you can do it as a uh, local domain you can do it as whatever you want to do I'm just doing my bakatech.com and then the DNS servers, I'm going to go ahead and put that as for the actual local router, and then I'm going to add a secondary one to Google. So I just added a comma there. And then confirm your settings and hit finish. Now there is some adjustments you can make to advanced, um, adding in different things such as like IP addresses, uh, not IP addresses, but PCI pass-throughs. USB pass-throughs, um, there's various configs that you can actually do, but I'm just showing a basic one here for right now. 
Now you have your VM, or your, excuse me, your container, and you can start it up. Now this is going to be very fast. Because it's a container, it's already booted. And your login that you created earlier will get you in. Now of course, it's a very basic container. You'll notice that I have config, for example, doesn't work. So what you're going to want to do is do like say yum install net tools. <clears throat> All right, and everything still installs as you expect. Now you have I have config again. Um, some basic tools I recommend, especially for your um, core installs of CentOS, Net Tools, Bind Utilities, um, Nano because I like I prefer that editor, um, Git, Curl, Wgit. The first one was Git Git, of course. Uh, Wkit, uh, Git, and Screen are definitely some core tools that I would recommend uh, if you're going to be adding in some any additional things that are not there you can always install the EPL, uh, EPEL releases but for basic installs I always just do those main tools unless of course it's a specific install where I'm trying to be more secure and then I will limit it to just the pure programs that I'm going to need but yeah that's basically it for a container I mean they're pretty simple um, if you go ahead and do this environment you can create up set different segments if you have more than one network adapter so you can actually have your VM all self-contained onto its own virtual uh, private uh, segment you can even create up just like you can in VMware you can create up its own internal virtual network that the only thing that can touch the outside would be a routing device there's various things that you can do and Proxmox is a very nice very well organized overall um, hyper, uh, hypervisor that I would recommend highly. I'm going to be doing some additional videos continuing on anything that you can do on Proxmox. If you like this type of video please make sure to hit that like button, leave me a comment, uh, share the video because it helps grow, uh, grow the channel. Um, if you hit the subscribe button uh, you'll be subscribed and you'll see any of my content show up in your subscription status. Um, if you want to get a little bit more notifications, since I don't yet post every week, um, you can hit that little bell icon and get notified whenever I do post. So you'll be first and front and center. And uh, I do have also Patreon and a couple of other options. They're down in the description. Thanks, guys. Bye.